Yeah, hit record. Yep. Okay, so the AC joint means that you're dealing with the clavicle and the acromion process. The acromion process is a portion of the scapula. So if we use the concept of one thing is still, one thing is moving in relation to it or relational motion. In this case, we're looking for a still clavicle and a moving scapula. So if I was to stabilize the clavicle and move the scapula, I'm gonna get nothing, right? It's not going to work. So I'm going to use the arm as a lever in order to move the scapula. Generally speaking, you're not going to get anything out of holding the clavicle back. It doesn't do much ever. The clavicle is at the acromial end is very rarely slid forwards. It is almost always slid backwards. That is what you will find in most cases. There may be a case where this doesn't do what you want and you have to go the other way, but I've never seen it myself. I clearly haven't seen all shoulders, so whatever. But anyways, still clavicle, moving scapula. I'm going to attempt to brace my thumb the best I can because my thumb is going to be a bar behind the clavicle. If I'm like this, this is hard on my thumb. If I'm like this, it's easier on my thumb. Depending on my hand and the person that's in front of me, I'm gonna have to contort it in all kinds of ways. If I wanna find the acromial end, I find the clavicle, right? And then I just bring my hand out to the end and go behind, right? This is tender in almost everybody to some degree. It's not easy to see, but this is braced on the thumb. This is one of my wonky thumbs. Or I mean, both of my thumbs are wonky, but this will bend way more. So how my thumb looks is not how everybody's thumb will look. Now what I want to do is consider contact as control and control as safety. If I were to just do this, I can move her all over the place. This isn't gonna work, right? This is a problem. So I'm gonna get in tight, at least in the seated position. Again, I'm looking for that still clavicle. So I'm gonna bring it here. Now, if you ever see the video of Dr. Still doing this, he's standing, he's in front of the patient. Because if you're in front of the patient, you can curl your fingers behind and pull forwards. And then he talks about bringing it across, up, and around. Now, basically what's gonna happen is that clavicle is gonna come back into your hand at some point. You won't be able to stop it. It'll feel like it's gonna roll under you, right? So if, I, if I'm here, we're okay. As I start to come up, see that, you, you feel that little roll. It's not visible, but it's palpable. Mm -hmm. So now, I need to come over here. You feel this? Mm -hmm. Not the most comfortable? Yeah, it's not comfortable. Yeah, and then I'm gonna bring it around there. See how it starts to roll forwards? Yeah. Right, obviously, it's gonna wiggle, but I just don't wanna let it do any of this stuff. So, jeez, I'm sorry. That's the bad side. Yep. That's see, that works a little bit better? Mm -hmm. Right, now it's not, I'm not gonna try to fix this. Every once in a while, you'll get a clunk. Don't look for the clunk, right? The old saying, or not old saying, but the saying that I've heard is don't get addicted to the crack, right? Uh, small pillow uh, on your back. Okay, so this is the same thing, but the orientation is different. So if you consider this a seated patient, I'm now in front of the patient. When you're in front of the patient and seated, you can't control their torso, so they wiggle. When they lay on their back, the table makes stable. Now their back or their torso is controlled for me. So, grabbing the wrist, sometimes a straight arm is going to work, sometimes a bent elbow is going to work. I can get my fingers behind the clavicle. Be very careful about the middle third. The middle third is very tender. It's where the brachial plexus is passing between the anterior and middle scalenes and then going behind the clavicle. So don't go to the middle third. It's called the bare area, I think, and it's very tender. So now I'm behind. I can lift, you'll see that right? Now all I do is bring it across. Now you see how my arm is in the way, right? So sometimes I'm going to have to let my, ooh, myself roll with you. And then there, this is, this works. Okay. You agree? This is okay. Ish. Yeah. You feel how it wants to do something now? Yeah. It almost wants to clunk, Yeah, it wants to clunk. but we're not going to force it because we don't do that. We work with what it will give us. Right. Now, sometimes you'll see me doing this. I'll stay in more contact. But because of things like me, did you feel my wrist just pop? Yeah. So a tendon in my wrist just did something funny. So it feels like it wants to do it on me again. So you have to pay attention to yourself and your mechanics. But there you go. It'll look like that, but it'll look different. Okay. Uh, big pillow. Lay facing that way, please. This will be tougher to see for you just based on position. But now, 
I'm behind the patient again. Shimmy back a bit more. There you go. So you see that bottom hand, just make sure they don't fall off the table because it's not nice. Now it's way easier with my thumb to be behind the clavicle, right here. I'm gonna be here and I don't have to do all of this stuff. I can literally just pull it back and around, right? So I don't, th th there was, that was the clunk? Yeah, so it was going forwards. So I can do all this, but I don't have to. There, goes again. Mm -hmm. I can just pull back because in a relative sense, if I keep the clavicle still, the scapula will move under it, right? No. That's about all it needs, right? Yeah. Although it already gave us the clunk, so whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's still clavicle, moving scapula by way of the arm.